I am very pleased to be here again to speak to this uh, inspiring gathering of Nigerian patriots in the diaspora, but who are actively engaged uh, in investing and in uh, even in shaping policy in Nigeria. This is the third summit, and this is my third appearance. And my reason each time I accept the invitation is the same. Our diaspora is one of the most vital resources that we have. A literally endless reservoir of talent, of trade, of investment opportunities, of tourism, education, culture, and sports opportunities. But perhaps more important is the sheer range of well-trained, honed, and experienced talents that our, that our diaspora represent. It is that potential, not necessarily just remittances, that make our diaspora network an endless source of economic hope and social aspiration. When we met last year, little did we know that the world will be afflicted by possibly the worst health crisis and the most devastating economic downturn in a generation. For us in Nigeria, as with many developing countries, it meant, you know, as of this quarter, a minus six, as of last quarter, a minus 6% slowdown in GDP. A sad development, especially after 12 consecutive quarters of growth. And so in response, we designed an ambitious 2.3 trillion Naira economic sustainability plan. And the focus of that plan is on creating jobs, uh, first by a mass agriculture program, uh, already we've enumerated 5 million farmers and geotagged uh, them to their farmlands. Also a mass housing program where we're building 300,000 homes in all states of the Federation using local materials and using uh, small to medium sized construction companies and using direct labor. What we plan to do is that in every one of the sites, already we're active in about 11 states, and what we're doing is that we're engaging very small uh, contractors, small construction companies, not any of the big ones, although we're using some of the big ones as coordinators. And so we, we, we also, on the sites, ensure that we have um, facilities for block making, for making of, pan for making of panels, uh, windows, doors, etc. All of this locally produced. The whole idea is to generate jobs, generate uh, opportunities and income in every locality that we're functioning in. We also have a solar program to make 5 million connections across the country. In other words, we're going to be putting 5 million solar home systems across Nigeria. Uh, and that will service in all about 25 million uh, uh, individuals. So uh, this, <clears throat> this particular project, the Solar Homes Project, involves a credit extended to uh, whole, uh, solar home systems, assemblers, and retailers by the CBN. In fact, all of our programs are actually supported by credit facilities which the CBN is offering. And that credit facility is about 1.3 trillion naira in all. And it is, uh, is, of course, as you can imagine, a substantial part more than half of the 2.3 trillion. So the whole idea is that the CBN is offering these credit facilities through uh, the, 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 the commercial banks to support our housing program, to support the solar home systems program, and also to support uh, the, uh, the agriculture program. The, uh, and, and what we've also tried to do and, you know, in, in, the, uh, in response to COVID-19 and also in furthering, our own, uh, in, in furthering our own economic policy is to attempt to make the fiscal environment as attractive as possible. You know, and, and this is important for us because the only way by which we can actually attract local investments, uh, and not, not to even speak of the sort of investments that we're expecting from the diaspora, the only way to attract local investments is to ensure that we have a fiscal environment that's attractive. We have an environment that makes sense for, for people to invest in. So what we've done is that we've used the instrumentality of the Finance Acts to make uh, or, you know, or propose significant reform. 
Let me just very quickly explain the Finance Act. Uh, every time we have a budget now, since, uh, since last year, we've also uh, proposed a finance bill to the National Assembly. Basically, the finance bill looks at several fiscal uh, issues that we want to legislate on or amendments we want to make in the law, which would make it easier for us to implement the budget and also to ease the fiscal environment or make the fiscal environment more friendly. So we started passing finance acts from last year and we're, and we're proposing a second finance act this year. Uh, so I'll just talk uh, briefly about what we achieved with the finance act last year. So last year, uh, the Finance Act, um, uh, we, we passed legislation making it, uh, making it uh, give, giving small companies with a turnover of less than 25 million a year uh, tax exemption from both companies, uh, from companies income tax, while medium-sized companies with a turnover of between 25 million to 100 million will now pay companies income tax at a lower rate of 20%. So. For those companies, they used to pay 30% income tax. Now they'll be paying 20%. Well, since last year, uh, when, when this was introduced, they've been paying 20%. Uh, and then services provided by microfinance banks are completely exempted from tax, from VAT. So no uh, microfinance bank uh, pays VAT now for its services. Withholding tax rate also on roads, on bridges, on buildings, and power plant construction contracts has been reduced from 5% to 2.5%. So those who are doing construction contracts and proposing for construction contracts pay a reduced rate. Uh, they no longer pay 5%, they now pay 2.5%. Now in the proposed uh, 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 2020 finance bill, we have gone a bit further. We are reducing by 50% uh, the minimum uh, tax rate. So. Uh, the minimum tax rate used to be 0.5%, now is reduced to 0.25% for gross turnover for the financial years ending between January 1st, 2020 and December 31st, 2021. So we reduced the minimum tax rate uh, by 50%, by half. Then we have exemption of small companies uh, with less than 25 million turnover from payment of the 2% education tax under the tertiary education uh, trust fund or TET fund. As you know, or, uh, the, so w w what happens is that companies pay a 2% tax in addition to whatever taxes they pay. They also pay a 2% TET fund tax and education trust fund tax. But what we're saying now is that, what we're saying now is that they are no longer, what we're saying now is that they're no longer required to pay, they're no longer required to pay um, for, the, for companies that have a turnover of less than 25 uh, million naira, they are no longer required to pay that 2%. Uh, they are no longer required to pay that 2% uh, tax for the education tax fund. So their tax burden is reduced. The, the other point, the other point is uh, with respect to the other point is with respect to software acquisition by companies. Now, now when companies acquire software for their for, for their companies uh, for uh, their company operations, in the past that was treated as an overhead. Now we are going to treat it as a qualifying expenditure for tax deduction to improve the ease of doing business. In other words, we now regard in other words we now regard uh, software acquisition as a capital expenditure. And we think that that's the right approach to it because uh, software today is essentially the uh, software for different business processes and all that. It's essentially the machine that uh, the, the, the companies work on. And so we see that it should be treated uh, as a capital expenditure as well. And uh, this, of course, would improve uh, the liquidity of companies and uh, generally encourage uh, ease of doing business. We've also done, there are also some specific uh, reductions. For instance, the transport sector is one which we think has, uh, the transport sector is one which we think has um, been under a great deal of uh, problems, uh, a great deal of tension, a great deal of tension. And um, we, what we've tried to do 
is that what we've tried to do is that we've uh, seen that unless we do something about duties, especially for uh, transportation, uh, for uh, cars, trucks, buses, etc., we may uh, find ourselves in a much more difficult situation than ever before. As you know, uh, we, re we, we removed uh, petroleum subsidies completely uh, about, uh, since March of this year. Uh, the implication of that, of course, is that, in, at least in the short term, uh, uh, petroleum prices will go up, and we expect that it will stabilize and the competition will actually, uh, will actually reduce. But what we then saw was that this meant increase in transportation costs, etc. And this was not helped by the very heavy duties that we had around, uh, that we had around uh, payment of, uh, around trucks, buses, and um, even uh, the, uh, motor vehicles generally. So what we've done now is that we've reduced duties on motor vehicles for transportation of goods from 35% to 10%. We've also, uh, we're proposing a reduction of the levy on motor vehicles for the transportation of persons, in other words, you know, cars, uh, just cars for transporting persons. There used to be a levy of 35%, and that has now been reduced to 5%. We also have uh, proposing a reduction in duties on tractors from 35% to 10%. So that, of course, uh, will support uh, some of the work that we're doing in, in agriculture, mass agriculture, and of course, several of the agricultural initiatives uh, going on around, uh, around the country. Um, they, 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 there are also quite a few other uh, innovations that are going on. Some of them may not be necessarily relevant to business, but the Finance Act, as I said, is one of the efforts that we're making to um, constantly review the business environment and make changes uh, in every budget cycle as we, as, as we see fit. So they, these are some of the, uh, uh, if you like, some of the new things that we're doing in the business uh, environment to make uh, things easier for those who are doing business and of course to generally, um, to, to generally uh, encourage ease of doing business around the country. W one of the critical things that you probably noticed is that um, food prices have gone up. Uh, this is of course on account of there are several different issues that have made this the way it is. One, of course, again, is transportation. Transportation of food from the hinterland up uh, to many of the urban areas where we notice, of course, our food prices have gone up. The other is flooding in several parts of, of the country, especially uh, the bread baskets of the country that, that mean considerable flooding. Uh, Kebi State, for instance, where quite a bit of rice is grown, had a lot of its rice fields destroyed by, uh, by flooding. And um, we've also had uh, several problems. Of course, uh, the supply chain problems caused by COVID-19 and most recently by some of the riots uh, that, uh, that followed the end south protests in different parts of the country. So we're also looking very critically at how uh, to deal with uh, the, the, how to remove those uh, bottlenecks and deal with some of those problems. And at the same time, ramp up food production. Uh, dry season farming is important to us and this is one of the key ways by which we hope to redress uh, some of the problems around uh, the food, uh, around um, food production and the cost of food. So we're all indebted to the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission and the Nigeria Diaspora Summit Initiative who have organized this summit in the past three years with outstanding results. As an outcome of last year's summit, uh, a committee to work on the modalities for the setting up of the Nigerian Diaspora Trust Fund has been established, uh, and I'm told uh, that uh, they're working very hard. The fund is to pay for development projects and programs while guaranteeing investors in the fund uh, attractive returns on their investment. There was also a very successful Nigeria-Saudi Arabia invest investment forum, which brought over 50 Nigerians in Saudi Arabia uh, who had hitherto had no 
business dealings in Nigeria uh, to come home and invest in businesses within the country. So this has also further strengthened social, cultural, and economic relations between Nigeria and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. In addition, there are quite a few other uh, testimonies from small and medium uh, scale enterprises that uh, got investments uh, in their businesses uh, through their participation in last year's summit. I understand that even the Nigeria Medical Association, the NME, took advantage of the networking opportunities that the summit provided. So we look forward to more achievements this year, especially with the coming on board of the State Diaspora Focal Point Officers, who uh, will help in facilitating diaspora investments in the various states. So let me again commend uh, the CEO of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, the indefatigable uh, Mrs. Abike W. Erewa, and her team, and uh, all our brothers and sisters in the diaspora, many of whom, of course, are joining us uh, virtually this time. And to say that uh, the diaspora uh, initiatives that we have and all of uh, your efforts are certainly appreciated and will conduce to a, a stronger economy for Nigeria and a much, much better country. Uh, and we, we all look forward uh, to uh, being able to meet uh, physically again, I hope, uh, next year when uh, I'm sure we would have somehow been able to deal with this uh, COVID thing and we'll all be able to uh, meet again and uh, see each other physically. Thank you all very much and I wish you all uh, a very great time at the summit.